Hello, my name is Hudson. I am a sophomore at Oka University. I am currently studying abroad in Japan at Kansai Gaida University, and this is my erratic yet charming discussion of what I've done, what I'm doing so far, and hopefully an inspiration to have someone else study abroad, because I think it's super fun. And I recommend it. Everyone should do it. Everyone should see the world. Everyone should explore. Hi, this is day two of me uh, not putting off. This is day one of me not putting off uh, recording by daily. So, which means is we're going strong. We are going strong. Today is currently, I have about 45 minutes left of Wednesday. Tomorrow will be Thursday. We're we'll talking about Tuesday and today, to, right now. Is that right? Hold on, did I just mess that up? Did I talk about Tuesday? Did I not talk about Monday? I did talk about Monday, but I talked about Tuesday as part of Monday. Just talking about what I was going to do tomorrow. So, yesterday, last time's video is tomorrow. That's confusing. Yesterday, I had my first class as uh, I woke up. I think I woke up on time. Was today the day I woke up late? Or yesterday? I think yesterday was actually the day I woke up late. Whatever. Regardless, I woke up perfectly timed. Shh. No way. My phone is not eligible to be unlocked. Shut up, support, customer support. Does that mean I finally get Wi Fi? I get data? No way. Oh gosh, I have to experiment with that. I'm not going to bed anytime soon. Son of a gun. Whatever. I woke up at an undisclosed time yesterday morning. I got to class on time. First class was my medical. Medical. What's the word? Food. That's the word. My culinary arts class was yesterday morning. And we discussed the quiz that was. We discussed more of the quiz. We discussed more of the test that we'll be doing soon ish. But we also talked about um, how we're doing their tasting soon. We're going to be in the kitchen eventually because Osaka has moved from red in regards to COVID to yellow. So we are counting colors as well as, you know, not as dangerous anymore in regards to COVID, which is good because that means stuff has opened up and we can hopefully be in the kitchen sooner, which is pretty awesome. So. Um, we also discussed some, we also discussed the Michelin status of things, which I didn't know was actually connected to the Michelin man for tires. I couldn't tell you which one came first, the chicken or the egg in regards to tires or the food rating process. But what I can tell you is that the tires people, okay, I guess I can't tell you what came first, the tire the Michelin service gave recommendations in terms of their city. Like, okay, you're driving through this. Why don't you stop here for a meal? And that evolved into being rated in a highly sought after recommendation tier list effectively into, you know, with still the Michelin man, the big old grown up. Oh, what's the tiny baby one? What's the tiny little baby? Something Michelin. It's the Pillsbury Doughboy. Michelin Man just looks like the adult Pillsbury Doughboy. But yeah, same same face, same everything, same company, just different people. Although how you go from tires to food in that line of work, those are very interesting board meetings. I'd imagine you have like half the room is divided. You get the tire people in one half. You get the food people in the other half. That would be hilarious to see. I would love to be a part of that, you know, that joint group meeting. Just like, all right, what are we going to talk about? Cars? Food. Cars? Food. That would be hysterical. Sign me up. Sponsorship by Michelin? That's an old joke. I need to stop doing the sponsorship bit. <laughs> um, uh, after that, I, did, I got some homework out of the way. I got some homework done. Uh, I did two. I had a lot of homework. To do by this morning i had like four pages i had two 
one page, two pages that were just the front side, and then like other three pages front to back that I needed to do for in my workbook that I, needed, that, that I had to do. So I did that. Uh, actually, I actually only did half my homework. I finished the rest of it that evening. Um, but then afterwards, I had a presentation to do on Inugami. And Inugami are super, super sad. I believe I talked about that. I didn't talk about that because I said no spoilers. Because I'm so much of an overthinker. Not overthinker. Um, forward thinker. Uh, Inugami are super, super sad. It's awful. I, so Inugami comes from Inu, which is dog, and Kami, which is god. So like god, dog, god. I'd much prefer a dog god than that these freaky things because to create an Inugami is to bury a dog up to its neck or to chain it up just out of the reach of food. Already off to a bad start. When it goes, you know, just that, that sweet spot between, you know, hungry and insane, you cut off its head. Mm -hmm. Still with me? Cut off its head, bury it in traffic. This is foot traffic. This is feudal Japan. You're not going to get any automobile cursed machines. But you bury it with a lot of foot traffic, so people walk over the buried head, stressing the spirit out more. And once it finally becomes an onryo or a powerful malicious spirit, you either feed the head, feed the spirit first after you unbury the head with the food that you taunted it with. Or you just skip that step and put it straight to the oven and bake it, preserve it, mummify it, whatever you decide to do. And to preserve it in some way. And now it is your faithful servant, the dog spirit. A dog, a faithful god, dog, guiding spirit. How awful is that? Super awful, isn't it? Um, they're pretty powerful. In regards to what they can do, they were made as a uh, protective spirit. And you can also like sick them on your enemies. Like here you go, Ghost Fido, go screw up that dude, and they'll they'll possess said that dude. And being possessed by uh, Inugami is not fun. It's painful. You get bouts of starvation. I wonder where that came from. Uh, so it starts of um, bouts of hunger. I should say in, in immense hunger. Um, you get just kind of crazy spells and you just start barking. Whether or not that's an explanation to, you know, justify early Tourette's is beyond me. But I doubt that would have made it past the gene pool because exorcisms usually ended in death if they got drastic enough. So there's that little ray of sunshine. Um... Inugami have also evolved into modern culture. There is a, at the moment, a VTuber that's Inugami in her name. Mm -hmm. There's figures of her. Don't go looking. Uh, there is a dating simulator game that turns an actual dog spirit into your wife? Question mark. I, the, I, this, is the, this is like the breaking point between traditional Japan and modern artist interpretations. There are a lot of games with dog spirits, and I really chose it because of Jujutsu Kaisen, and they have, you know, demon dogs, divine dogs, or whatever. Um, these are definitely more demon dogs, and they have their heads are intact, but then their bodies are, like, super long and willowy. Some of the most chilling ones that I saw were darn near close to greyhounds in terms of spindly limbs, but they were scrawny and just spider-like and it was it was kind of freaky looking uh, so we did that then we talked about um arogawa ranpo which if that name sounds like lit akin to anything that you've heard before it's because this dude took the name of, of edgar Allan poe and if you spell it out in the same katakana as you would you know spelling out in english any english words ed edga ara Po, Aran Po, Edga Ara Wan Po, Ran Po. So he just he just flipped a number of couple letters around. And he was like, "Oh, that's my new name." And he had a lot of interesting things to say. Most of them were revolved around the Edo Guro Edo Guro Nanense, No Nanense, Nanen. 
erotic, grotesque nonsense is what the translation is supposed to be. I don't remember what the actual term was, but uh, it revolved around him. Okay, some of the stories were like Caterpillar, for example, and this is a story about a dude who got terribly, terribly wounded in uh, World War One, and then the story wound its way around to him inching across grass to throw himself into a well. Granted, that was after the, his wife, who had ever so bit diligently been taking care of his, her now disabled everything husband, uh, got fed up of taking care of said disabled everything husband and gouged out his eyes, the only sense that he had left after the explosion took off all of his limbs and the rest of his senses. How it exactly killed his sense of smell and hearing? Okay, well, a bomb, I guess, would definitely impair your hearing, but smell and taste? is beyond me but yeah she got a little irritated <sniffs> took his eyes uh he took a paintbrush in his mouth and wrote i forgive you when she went to go report herself to the police they both came back from the note look out the window and there's inchworm tossing himself into little timmy's well so hence the name caterpillar i'm allowed to make the inchworm joke okay they did it first um <laughs> Another one is a little, um, another one is a little darker. It's definitely not a story for you two. That is for sure. Definitely that, that, that is a story for me, really. But, um, okay, that's not sure definitely a story for me. I, I cracked a couple jokes in it. Some jokes that I am definitely proud of, but jokes that I will not be repeating here. Let's just say there was a masseuse, a blind masseuse who had a fascination with the human body, and then that turned around into a dungeon of sorts where he had creative ways to kill people and then hide, dispose of the remains, including but not limited to tying little bits and pieces to helium balloons and floating them around the city and dismembering a good friend and um, hiding them in a snow sculpture. So when June comes around, it's like, oh, look, the snow sculpture's melting. What a shame. The pretty thing is a human arm. This guy was weird. This guy was definitely messed up in the head, but it's cool. I think they was interesting. I still prefer Edgar Allan Poe, because Telltale Heart gives me chir shivers and chills every time. So. Not shivers. It gives me chills every time. It's it's, it's a scary, it's a scary story. Um, so that was yesterday. Today, a little bit more laid back. Definitely not going to take the same amount of what, like twelve minutes now. Um, I actually can't see the time. Um, excuse me, this I was thirty. Okay, I guarantee that I said twelve minutes when it just turned like thirteen minutes. Of course, it did. Um. Today I had my Japanese class in the morning. Um, I believe I've actually finished all my homework already for it. I got like four pages, no, two pages, no, four pages. I had a worksheet because I got we worked on kanji today for the first time. Like I have one through ten now, which isn't as bad as I thought it was. Heck, one, two, and three are all like three horizontal lines, respectively. Um, four is the little box. Five is a, is a funky K. Six is a strange tally mark. Seven looks like Se in Katakana. Eight looks like He, which is just like this. It's like two straight lines. Nine is another weird R. And ten is the letter T. See, I know kanji. I've, I've learned two alphabets in the span of, what, four weeks? Just, just give me my medal now. Not to say that I'm awesome or anything, but... <laughs> um, that was a weird, was a weird graphic for you on know, camera. Kind of going like this to my own horn, but... I don't know if I'm delirious quite yet. I'm definitely tired, but I'm not sure I'm to the point of insanity, so... Um... But you guys are along for the ride, so ha 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 ha. 
Um, uh, what else did I do this morning? <laughs> On my way, I got breakfast because my stomach was growling. I got a rice ball and a bottle of water for breakfast. Um, turns out salmon flakes are pretty tasty. I actually really want to make onigiri. I can definitely do it. I just need to find the method to do it. How would be easier to make it at home? I have rice here. What would I put in it? Discussion for another time. I have. Okay, I might have an idea, but this is I, that's a surprise. Um, I had, we haven't talked about more sentence structure in regards to um, taking apart questions and stuff. We were formulating our own questions. We were talking about. I'm not sure we introduced anything new today. Other than a different kind of question, it was. Um, um, one of our fictional characters in the book, like Takashi-san and, and Mary-san, went on a date. Good for them. They were planning to go to the movies, and I've read ahead in the book, and I know for a fact that they go to a burger shop, and one person hears McDonald's, the other person hears Moss Burger, so they both go home upset until they get their phones out, and they're like, hmm, I wonder what happens. So... I don't know if that's cheating or like reading ahead or using my resources. The language here, that some of the examples here, heck, advertisements here are insane. Absolutely bonkers. They have the production value of like SNL for every commercial. They're so over the top and they're so much fun. Um, uh, I didn't do anything after my Japanese class. I have been just hanging out all day, I'm doing homework and studying, and I know for a fact that we have a quiz, that we have a test on Tuesday for my Ghosts and Monsters class. So I've been making sure I'm not going to fail on that. Other than that, it's been a pretty slow day, pretty easy day. Sorry, I'm dropping batteries. Um, yeah. And I'm actually about to go, it's currently 11, I think almost 11.30. So I'm going to go get ready for bed and then tap out for the day. Because I have to be up early tomorrow morning and I'm already sleepy. Yeah, it's been a good day. I'm just going to put these away. I'm going to like keep making noise. I think there's a spot that I can actually put dead batteries. They'll probably be fine. Um, but yep, that's, that's going to be good for me today. I'm going to go get ready for bed. An uneventful day. The weeks go by so fast. So fast. I can tell you right now, but it is, what week is it? I have a little thing in my word book. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? So we're on lesson four as of today. So we've already finished a whole page of like this nonsense. So that means one, two, three, four, five, six. Because it's only week six. I felt like this was later than week six. How many weeks do we have? Seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I'm almost halfway done. I have two more weeks. I'm almost done with this week. I'm almost done with week six. And then I'm halfway done. That is bizarre. That doesn't feel real. That doesn't feel real. I've only been here for a week. This is a few. Okay, two alphabets. I need to go to bed. These third. Someone is prying my third eye wide open. I'm 
morning would have been, oh, it was just 20 minutes. I could have ended it just 20 minutes. That would have been satisfying. No. Now I'm about to end it at like 2020, just to be fitting, just to be some sort of. No, uh, I've been 20 minutes too. There. Regardless, thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for stopping by. I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Two days, probably. Probably two days. Yeah. But that's going to do it for me. Thanks for going. Thanks for listening. These are always fun to do. So, yeah. Arigato.